Hi everyone and welcome to our Happy Highest You live cast. This is episode 6 and we're going to be talking with Emily Steinus. I'm just going to add her really quick. Hi! Hey! You have to turn your camera on. Okay, one second. Perfect. And then I was just going to do a little intro. <laughs> while, you get, while I get adjusted. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so we'll be talking. Um, so for those of you that aren't familiar with who I am, I'm Kim Leskovic. I'm an essential oil educator and wellness coach. And it's my mission to help um, people find wellness tools that have them feeling really empowered and lit up about um, their days. So waking up just feeling really enthusiastic and empowered to get them through um, each day and their life. So um, tonight we're going to be talking with Emily Steinus. Um, she told us that her name is pronounced like your highness. So if that, if that tells you a little bit about her, um, I thought was kind of clever. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so she's the founder of BootBod, and she's also a power yoga and kettlebell instructor. Um, she's also certified in the integrative nutrition um, and is my business and life bestie. So um, that's a little bit about her. Emily, do you have anything else you want to? <laughs> I think that's great. Okay, perfect. Um, and then I was just going to kind of start out tonight. Um, hi, Beth. <laughs> um, if you guys do have like an essential oil near you or just um, a little self-love ritual that you want to do before with us. Um, I told Emily to grab a little oil and I just think it's, it can be kind of nerve wracking to come on live or be interviewed and I just want to make this fun and enjoyable. So um, yeah, I rolled this on my wrists and you can feel free to do the same. Take a little, take a little breather. Sorry, I had my whole thing set up with my camera the other way, and now I don't know how to do it without holding it, so. That's okay. Hopefully it's not annoying that it keeps moving. <laughs> no, you're fine. This is perfect. Um, yeah, so that is how I kind of just, what'd you choose? I did passion. Right. Me too, yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I guess, like, to start us off, if you just kind of, um, I guess if you just want to start us off with why you kind of have started like a self-love journey and if you've always been on one, kind of how you got started in wellness. Yeah. So I think um, like innately, I've always been a pretty happy, positive person. <laughs> but um, in terms of self-love, um, it's definitely been kind of a journey and um, learning more and more, which we all do, right? We all grow and learn um, more things about ourselves or what makes us happy. Um, but ultimately, I feel like for me personally, my self-love um, journey really started when I got into yoga and when I got into um, kind of just into the fitness world of even teaching kettlebell and getting certified um, and having someone say like, hey, you should do this. Like you're up, you are, you know, you're picking this up. You're doing really great. Like you should consider doing this. And then, um, you know, just kind of taking that on. I went to, I was originally in um, undergrad for elementary education. And then I started doing yoga and kettlebell training and all these other things. And then it's actually my dad was the one who asked me like, why aren't you doing anything with health and fitness? And I was like, I don't know. Can you do that? Can you major in that? So then I switched my whole kind of my whole path to that. And, um, I feel like from there, then it's like, okay, this is what I should be doing. Um, and that's where I felt like I was, you know, appreciating my own body, being a little bit more mindful, tuned in, especially with yoga, but also like embracing what I'm capable of with kettlebell and feeling empowered, which to me is all part of self-love. Um, and then of course, being able to share that with other people was like, Oh, the best. Like it was like, this is what I need to be doing. Um, and realizing what it, what it had done for me. Same thing with my integrative nutrition and health coaching. Um, because it's like all encompassing. It's not just about the food components, even though that is important. Um, looking at relationships and kind of all the other aspects of life, which again, if aren't fulfilled or we're not happy in those areas, it's hard to 
one, feel like we're taking care of ourselves, but also be able to give to others. So I feel like for me, it was kind of gradual, but started with yoga, kettlebell, kind of the other trainings, honestly, that I was doing. Um, so I guess that's good. I'm doing, I'm in the right field. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I'm, I feel like with all of those components, I can kind of make sure I'm doing, practicing self-love, but then also I get to share, which is so awesome. That's so cool. Um, and just even just the act of self-love of like switching majors and just like flowing with like what makes you you is totally like a component of that by just being aware of like what you desire and just being okay with accepting that was something I thought was really cool from your story. Um, and then, yeah, so you kind of touched on it, but um, if you if you want to touch on kind of how you, sorry, the tools you use for like self-love in your life, and then you kind of mentioned on how it helps you to serve. Um, how do you like feel it helps you serve and like what ways, like does it affect your mood? Do you just feel good physically? Um, that's kind of where I'm going with that. Yeah, yeah. so like the ways that I practice self-love. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's a hundred million. There's so many things. Um, so like the simple things are things that we might like think of all the time, which are valid for me, but um, moving my body is a form of self-love, whether it's yoga, kettlebell, other types of workouts. Um, it just feels good. Um, like sitting and reading a book, um, do make, doing meditations, journaling, uh, affirmations, using essential oils. I mean, all of that stuff is totally self-love. I think in a nutshell, what it comes down to um, is being like totally tuned in to how I'm feeling and then like recognizing that and then just making a choice based on that. So if I'm feeling anxious, a form of self-love for me would be to do something to help with that one, recognize why I'm feeling anxious or why I'm feeling worried or overwhelmed or whatever the emotion is, and then take action, right? If that means tweaking something, if I have power to control something and change something, I will. If it's a matter of just needing to cope, it might be a meditation, it might be a breathing exercise, it might, you know, make a date with my one of my besties to like get my mind off things it could be a lot of different things but I think like in a nutshell it could look a lot of different ways but self-love to me is um like being mindful and aware of how I'm feeling at any given moment recognizing why I might be feeling that way and then moving forward and again if it could be a good thing too it could be that I'm feeling really excited or really amped or really empowered and embracing that and having a sense of gratitude for that moment and then trying to figure out how I can keep rolling with it, right? How can I continue to feel this way? Um, so I feel like it's, it's kind of vague, but I feel like it's, it's all encompassing to me. I mean, self-love is, it's it going to be a little bit different for every person. Um, but ultimately if we're tapped into how we're feeling mentally, emotionally, physically, then we can address it accordingly. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, that really makes sense. And part of what I kind of wanted to come on and like, voice with people is the difference between like self-care and self-love because I sometimes think that can get confusing although like taking a shower might be a form of self-love but it's that feeling that you talked about and like um not only taking care of your basic needs through self-care like eating and showering but like taking it a step further and like feeling really good and then um just keep like choosing those things that make you feel really good I don't know <laughs> I'm really but oh, totally. yeah so I, I feel like that kind of just, like, separated in a kind of focusing on your emotions versus, like, your physical. I thought that was uh, neat how you touched it. I think in our world, it's we live in such, like, an external world in terms of what do I need to be doing, who do I need to talk to, who, what, is, what are people thinking about me, and is this normal? Like, all of these things that kind of this outside world that um, I think it's, I think we're getting better at it. Like being mindful is such like a buzzword right now. So people are kind of starting to like understand or maybe think about what it means. Um, but I think that we need to t tune inward more and like really check into how, how we're feeling and what, what we're feeling to move forward. And one of my favorite ways to do that is with journaling. Journaling and meditation, I think are the most two, for me, most powerful ways to really tap into what's happening up in, up in my brain. <laughs> Because yeah. sometimes it's hard to, to process it. We just kind of go through life with feeling however we're feeling, and we never really step outside of that or step back and kind of check in. Yeah. So to me, again, that's what self-love is. And, like, again, with, like, 
tuning in, but also like seeing it on the outside that journaling is a good way to like get it out. I always tell people if they're like caught up in their head, just get it out on paper and so you can see it and feel it. Um, yeah. And so I thought you would for sure like list yoga as number one, but that's <laughs> um, how would you say like, since you are like a yoga instructor and um, obviously it's a huge self love um, activity, how would you like say it's incorporated in your practices um just a couple ways if you want to <laughs> yeah I mean again I'm slightly biased because I love yoga but I think just the act of taking a yoga class is a form of self-love mm -hmm. um I think a lot of people when they start yoga they can start it for different reasons typically what I found is people start yoga for more of the either the workout or the stretching or the physical components but then they start to understand the benefits um, later, or obviously when presented or cued in a certain way, if I'm offering some sort of little nugget in that class, being able to absorb something um, different. But I think, I mean, yoga is a time to kind of separate yourself from, from reality a little bit, to tune inward. It, like, forces us, it teaches us, especially when done regularly, to be more aware of how we're feeling in that moment, getting rid of like judgment, right? Kind of embracing it, letting our ego go, like owning whatever's happening that day, whether we're feeling rock solid and so strong and like we can do anything or we're feeling like, okay, I cannot even lift my foot off the ground today. I have no balance, right? Not letting that affect how we feel emotionally, which I think is such an important thing to take outside of yoga. I think a lot of what we do in yoga can be translated outside into our everyday life. Um, but again, all of that to me is is a form of self love because it's it's again checking in, it's tuning in, it's being aware, um, and it's allowing our bodies to be or move or breathe um, in a certain way that is suit that suits us that day. So it might be like I said, pushing and going all in, kind of working through something on our mat. Um, that maybe is happening outside of life and just like giving it our all, leaving it all out there. Or it might be pulling back because we feel too frazzled or too th things, you know, not right. We Maybe we feel a little bit off or we feel a little bit tired or we have a little shoulder impingement, something. So we're <laughs> going to ease up a little bit, let go, and kind of listen to our body that way. Um, and, again, we translate that. Again, from my experience but also from teaching um, for many years, I think people start to learn that and they realize like, oh, I realized at work today that I was like really tense in my shoulders. So I did like, I relaxed my shoulders, which sounds so simple, but those things matter. Like we have to be more aware of, of what we're doing. Um, so I think again, the mindfulness aspect, not to sound like a broken record, but the mindfulness aspect to me is, is the most powerful act of self-love that we can kind of provide for ourselves, um, in a yoga class. Um, and then not to mention just the breath and the movement. I mean, we need that again. Physically, mentally, emotionally, There's our breath is powerful. It can totally turn off our stress response and turn on our relaxation response, um, which, again, we need in our crazy lives of going, going, going. Um, so in that sense, it's a, it's a form of self-love. It's a break from reality. It's going to calm us down, kind of refocus us, center us, kind of give us a clear, clear mind, clean slate. And then the physical components, I mean – Again, so yummy. Like, I feel like we, you never leave a yoga class and feel like, gosh, I wish I didn't do that. <laughs> you know, you always feel so much better, whether it is for, so much more relaxed or maybe it's so much more energized. It's kind of you get out whatever you need to that day. And I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, and totally. And I think a component that came to mind for, like, yoga, too, is, like, the body scans and, like, basically yeah. just, like, really loving your unique body and, like, taking that outside of the class as well. And I've done this exercise too with um, like by being like in a bathtub and you can kind yeah. of be really grateful for like certain body part or, you know, um, whatever. But yeah, I think, I think it really brings your awareness. Like you said, that's the first step is being mindful, being aware um, and then accepting like who you are and accepting the moment. And then that, then you can take action, you know? Um, so, yeah, you summed it up. Too, like, right, you made me think of this, but I try to instill in anyone that takes 
my class is that it's not about what the pose looks like, and especially with social media and a bunch of, like, you know, yogis doing a bunch of crazy postures and maybe thinking that yoga is, like, all about, like, can you do a handstand? Can you do this crazy arm balance? And, well, I love to do those things because they're fun and it's challenging for me and it pushes myself. Um, that's not what yoga is about, and it's not about, like, what I look like doing the post poses, like, meaning what anyone looks like doing the postures, about how it feels in our body. And, again, we're all going to look different when we do them. And just like you said, we just have to embrace embrace who we are, right? No judgment. Embrace who we are and um, just roll with it and be appreciative that we can be moving and be on our mats and show up for ourselves at any given time. More teachers. Me. No, I'm kidding. I <laughs> hope more teachers, like, um, can just bring that uniqueness to their classes as well and just – because, like, social media is saturated and – um, I've personally felt intimidated, like I'm doing Emily's teacher training in March, Woo -woo. Um, but like, I mean, it can be scary, like trying to like go for something like that when you see all these like crazy poses and who am I to like be a yoga teacher and, you know, obviously that fear steps in a little bit, but it's, it's great to have that experience and to know like the feeling it originally gave you and why you're doing it. So yeah. for touching on that as well. <laughs> Um, and then I did want to speak a little bit to, um, like your self love bundle. Cause I know you guys just created that and it just aligns perfectly with what we're talking about. Um, and yeah, I know there's like some sweet treats and I'm kind of curious about the food aspect as well. <laughs> yeah. So the self love bundle that Beth and I created, um, from Boobad. So Boobad, the, the whole, our whole kind of, a boot bod in a nutshell is to move your bod, and we do that, we share that through yoga and kettlebell workouts um, to fuel your life, and that is specifically in terms of what we're eating, right, nourishing our soul, nourishing our body um, in terms of what we're eating and putting in our body, but also in terms of the mental component, mindfulness, meditation, journaling, affirmations, all of that, which, again, we we know from our own experience is is essential. Like, you can't just move your body and work out every day. That doesn't mean you're going to be, like, your happiest, healthiest self, right? There's a lot of other things that come into play. So that's the fuel. And then the nourishing um, your life, again, goes back to those things as well, but kind of comes out into our in our programming, like our self-love bundle, which is um, – we created it kind of in lieu of Valentine's Day in, in February, um, but it's kind of a snippet of all of those components. So we have a little kettlebell workout. We have a little yoga flow, a little heart-opening postures. Um, we have a, a loving-kindness meditation. Um, what else do we have? We have that yummy recipe. So it's a, a healthy chocolate, chocolate chip cookie recipe. Um, and it's really, really delicious. It has avocado in it. That's the secret ingredient. Um, but all the ingredients are, like, super, like, clean. I think it's, like, five or six ingredients total, um, which, again, we're just being more aware of what we're putting in our bodies, right, I think is really important. But also being, like, not feeling like we can't indulge and can't enjoy our food, right? We should, we should enjoy what we're eating, and we shouldn't, you know, deprive ourselves of anything. So we just thought this was a fun, a fun treat. Um, and then ultimately, again, it's kind of a, a just a sneak peek at our full Thrive Guide that's coming out um, soon, very soon, days, days away. We're trying to finish it up, um, which will be like a full program. You can do it four weeks or a full eight weeks where you'll have, you know, a workout, yoga flows, recipes, all sorts of loveliness. But, um, yeah, the, the fuel is a big part of it. So, again, beyond moving your body, fueling mind and internally. Um, it's really important. Yeah, that program sounds amazing. Um, kind of going off of, like, the food component, do you have any, like, personal self-love rituals about, like, enjoying your food? I'm just curious because I know some people bless their food. You know, I, I don't know. I'm trying to get better at being, like, this is good no matter what it is and, like, just be really mindful of how I talk to myself about food. Um, sure. Yeah. Yeah, so I think – um, just in terms of choosing what foods we're putting in our body and being conscious of those choices. And by no means am I, like, perfect, right? Um, but I am conscious in terms of whether I'm going grocery shopping or planning out my day, um, making sure I'm choosing foods that I know are going to energize me or going to fuel me for whatever I'm going to do that day or however long kind of I'm going before I can have another snack or eat again. So making sure I'm conscious of those choices. Um, 
One of my favorite things to do, which I, I teach in uh, one of the classes that I teach, we do a breakfast experiment, which I totally encourage anyone to try. But I think it's one way to kind of change your relationship with food and recognize that, you know, you might just eat things that you've always eaten because you've always eaten them, like the same cereal you've had since you were five years old that you always eat or the same, same snack foods. Um, but sometimes, again, we just so get so caught up with doing what we've always done without, like, stepping back and checking in. So it's called the breakfast experiment, and you would do – you eat something different every day for five days, or it could be a week. Um, and then logging, like, right after you eat, like, within 20 minutes, how do you feel? Not just, like, I feel good. Like, checking into, are you full? Are you still hungry? Um, do you feel bloated? Do you feel energized? Do you feel awake? Do you feel tired and sluggish? And then doing the same thing two hours after and checking in. And so trying to eat something different every day. It doesn't have to be breakfast. It could be any meal. Um, and then looking back at that and recognizing which foods kind of fueled you, like truly in terms of made you feel good, energized. Maybe it was feeling light versus feeling really heavy and bogged down. Um, so again, choosing foods and just from experience and from life, um, I know kind of what foods do that for me. And so I, I kind of have a routine in terms of what I eat for the most part. Um, the other one I love to do, which um, I don't do necessarily every single day, I do it in at least a few bites a day, but not like my whole eating experience is mindful eating, which again is being like zero distractions, which again is something that we all do, right? We watch TV while we eat, we're on our phones while we eat, we might be checking our emails as we eat, um, but kind of getting rid of those distractions and um, literally just being curious about your food, checking it out, looking at it, smelling it, trying to, to put it in your mouth and move it around. Notice which, like, teeth you're used to chew. Notice what your jaw is doing. Notice your tongue. Notice the taste and the texture. Chewing your food a little longer than you normally would. Kind of slowing down the whole process and absorbing all of your senses in terms of that food, which, one, helps you enjoy it a little bit more. You can actually taste it versus just, like, shoveling food in your mouth and not being aware. Um, it also helps you... Um, especially if you feel like you're somebody that eats and always feels like, ugh, gross, like I ate too much. Um, it's a really good tactic to try. Or one of my favorite things to do is if we're, if we're quote, unquote, indulging or having something that maybe isn't something we have all the time, like enjoy every single bite of it, right? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. enjoy, and you also might feel like you don't need as much, right? You don't, you feel satisfied after having several bites versus eating the whole shebang, depending on what it is. So, Again, that's self-love to me because it's, it's, again, being tuned into what we need and not just eating with our eyes. It's eating with our kind of how we feel and what we actually need and enjoying the experience because we should. Food's awesome. <laughs> totally. I love that. And that's, um, that's actually funny, the whole mindful eating thing is going back to, like, freshman year, I took this happiness seminar, and she gave us, like, I think it was, like, a Skittle, but we had to, like, chew it so slow and, like, yeah, all the senses, but it was a really cool experience. And I noticed, like, I've always kind of had digestive um, issues growing up and stuff, but I noticed, like, slowing down and, like, chewing smaller bites not only helps with that, but makes me, like, enjoy the process more, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. chewing your food is your first, the first step in digestion, so you're helping your whole digestive system out if you can slow down and chew a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, I was always on the go, thought I had to eat fast, so... Um, my mom told me I was, I'm like a vacuum and I always inhaled my food, so I've, I've worked on it. Yeah, <laughs> we're, we're getting better. <laughs> yeah, it's a process. <laughs> um, and then lastly, I just want people to be able to know where they can find you, where they can find the self-love and thrive guide bundle. <laughs> yes. So um, you can go right to our, our Instagram account, which is bootbod, B-O-O-P-B-O-D, um, which I also have linked in my profile. I'm Gerkstein profile if you want to find it. Um, you can also go to our website, but right in our profile, there's a link that will take you to getting the self-love bundle, which is totally free, and you should check it out. And if you use it, let us know. Send us a message or send us a picture of, of you doing your meditation or making your cookies or something because we'd love to see it. Who's doing the um, guided meditation? Beth, Beth did it. She really? Did it. Yeah. It's the, it's the <laughs> kindness meditation. Yeah. <laughs> Go, Beth. Woo-hoo. <laughs> um, and then if you just have any um, last little self-love quote or little nugget you want to leave people with. Oh, gosh. Huh, I don't have a quote. Um, <laughs> Your favorite, but, like, inspiration. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think – I think it, it just has to be a priority. I think self-love in whatever, whatever way you 
like define self love. Um, maybe make a list of all the ways that you feel like what self love is to you, and then figure out a way to make sure that you are doing at least one of those a day. Um, and again, it can be as little or as big um, as it may be. It doesn't have to be anything super extravagant, but trying to prioritize yourself, right? And if we're not fulfilling our own cups and feeling super happy and healthy and who we are, it's really hard to offer that to the world and offer that to other people. So making sure that you're taking care of yourself. It's really important. Love it. All right. Well, thanks so much for coming on here. Thanks for having me. <laughs> My first live. Woo! Good. You did great. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, check out her self love bundle and thrive guide, and we we will see you next week, guys. Bye, guys. Thanks, Emily. Thanks.